Scott Pendlebury, what have you been up to since Collingwood won the Premiership the last Saturday in September? Yeah, we've um, obviously a bit of a whirlwind week sort of post grand final, but um, yeah, went away to Byron Bay for a couple of weeks and um, yeah, sort of slowly ticked back into training and got things like that. And being January now, or start of Feb, we're, we're fully back in the swing of it. We play a few practice games coming up and things like that. But yeah, I think most importantly after the season, just sort of unwind, decompress, because it's a pretty crazy September for us. And um, yeah, able to get some quality family time as well. Is summer so much sweeter once you've achieved the ultimate? I mean, you've done it before, but you've got the contrast to summer when you don't quite get there and a the summer when you do. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, the year before we played the prelim final and lost by a point against Sydney. Um, yeah, it's sort of, it's nice to finish knowing you won that last game. Um, traditionally in footy, you always finish wanting more because you didn't get the result or whatever is to be the case. And I was, yeah, on the right end of the result. Um, able just to enjoy it and be with my family and friends, not thinking, oh, if we had done this better or done that, all those questions were, weren't in my mind. It was now, how good was that? That was awesome. And being able to share it with, you know, all the Collingwood faithful, um, our supporters, our club, my family was, was really special. So as an elite athlete that plays a professional winter sport, there's a real change of life for you from winter to summer. What do you love most about the summer months? Um, yeah, well, pretty much as soon as the season's done, we're chasing the sun. So we went to Fiji as a family. Um, everyone's just happier in summer. Um, yeah, you get to put the Archies back on more. And um, yeah, so we just chase the sun for a couple of weeks, get the warm weather. You feel really good, energetic. And um, yeah, and then, you know, come back and embrace a little bit more of our winter. Favourite memories of Grand Final Day? It was an epic day, and I imagine the fact that this flag, as opposed to the one you won back in 2010, because you had your young kids there, had a different element to it. Yeah, um, it's probably the first time all year my family got to the game early. Um, so I actually found where they were sitting for the first time of the year pre-game. So running out, I seen like Jackson, Darcy, in the Alex, of 100,000 yeah, people, found them all, waved to them pre-game. Wow. So that was really special. So then when the siren went, I knew exactly where they were. Um, but little did I know they were actually down on the fence and probably one of my favourite things, I think we're the first team ever to have all our family and kids and that out on the ground post game. Um, and just watching the kids run around with the confetti and just seeing how happy that made everybody, um, yeah, it made me smile a lot. And it was just a magical week. The weather in Melbourne was off the charts good. The game was as good as we'll ever see. And it ended with you guys winning a flag. I mean, it's going to be hard to top that. Yeah, I know that weather. Everyone speaks about it. Like the training all week was just magical. Um, having our families involved in training, the parade, um, grand final day, you could just see how everyone, happy everyone was, like driving into the game. You know, people in shorts and t-shirts. Um, everyone just, yeah, the weather just brought out the most magical part of the day and then the game had to live up to it. And mm. I feel like the game lived up to the hype. You know, it was a high scoring game. Some amazing bits of play. Um, everything you really wanted and then the most important thing was we were on the right end of the result. So you are a veteran of the AFL due to play game 400 a little later this season and one thing you're renowned for is your professionalism and that is linked so strongly with your longevity. What do you do to look after your body to get you to the MCG or Marvel yeah, yeah. wherever it is every single week to make sure you're in tip-top condition? Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, obviously, um, a lot of recovery stuff. So whether that's, you know, getting down to the bay a few times a week, I've got an ice bath at home, I've got a gym at home, sauna, treadmill, Pilates machine, sort of diet? everything. Diet? Well, my wife's a nutritionist, so um, that was a prerequisite for Alex. No, it wasn't <laughs> really. But, um, yeah, so all those things, I think, add up because I've now, when you set out as a 21 year old to play, you want to play for as long as you can, but you need to make those changes, I feel, at 21 to heavily invest in yourself and then it comes back. I feel like it's, it's too late if you start getting sore and be like, oh, I'm going to be really professional now. It's like you've, you've missed the boat. So, yeah, it's something that I've tried to do. I'm now the, um, as my teammates like to remind me all the time, I'm the oldest player in the league. So, um, yeah, see if I can be the oldest player in the league for a few more years yet. And you reckon there's a direct correlation to recognising as a youngster you need to be doing things that other players aren't? Yeah, exactly. And I had great mentors like Paul Lecure in that when I was young, first starting. Um, just pointing me in the right direction, you know, if you saw, do this or, you know, make sure you eat this type of food. And just being really inquisitive too when I was young, asking questions of the dietitian, the s &C guys about, you know, little things that I can do above and beyond. So. Yeah, obviously, if your body's feeling healthy and you're playing good footy, then you're going to get to play for a long period of time. And 
uh, I enjoy that process. So you, uh, in addition to being very professional with your longevity, you also love other sports and I know you take a really keen interest in what goes on over in America. Who do you look to for inspo in terms of professionalism and athleticism and, and what other sports do you like to watch yeah, to probably, take them a bit away? Probably basketball for me was like Kobe Bryant. He was, you know, my biggest idol. Um, this year inside my jumper, I had a you know, Mamba mentality, which is sort of mm. Kobe's thing. So he was probably the guy I've always looked up to and just, you know, his thoughts on recovery, training, work ethic, you know, being a dad as well, like, yeah. um, was pretty, you know, well spoken about how good of a dad he was as well and making time and trying to fit his life in around family. So I took a lot of stuff from Kobe and then, yeah, as I've got older too, just other athletes you see doing things well, just seeing if you can pick you know, parts of what they're doing add into your game. So what are you doing? You're watching a lot of American sports. Are you reading autobiographies of other athletes? How are you kind of tapping into that? Um, oh, what's well, so easy. Like now with your phone, mm. your social media, um, YouTube, you know, watching them play, the documentaries that get released, as you said, books as well. So whatever I can sort of get. And, um, you know, a lot of people know that I'm interested. So I get flicked a lot of articles to read and things like that. So yeah, just keeping up to date and seeing if I can pick, you know, new techniques up. What's your favourite Archie's uh, song colour? Uh, white. I'm pretty oh. boring and basic, that but I like white. Just yeah, they're Black my and white they're, yeah, they're my you know they're my beach shoe, they're my dress shoe, so suits me perfect. I'm the opposite. I go for the colour, yeah. the flavour. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got the orange on now, or the, the peach. Orange, yeah, so. I think I've got them all at home. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, I want to ask you a question about what the average day in your life is. But I'm also really aware, it's probably a two-part question because there's the summer Scott Pendlebury and yeah. then there's the in-season Scott Pendlebury. So let's go summer months first. Pre-season, what are you doing? Um, yeah, so I always get up reasonably early. I try and get up before the kids wake up. So I get up about 5.30, 6 o'clock. So usually the kids are sleeping well. That's, you know, gives yep. me a bit of time. So yeah, I've got an ice bath that I set at home. So I always start my day, jump in the ice bath for a few minutes. Um, and then I'll go outside and just do some mobility and stretching and stuff. As I said, I'm 36 now, so a bit older, so I need to keep uh, nimble and stuff like that. And then I'm a massive lover of coffee, so my job at home is the coffee machine. Alex is not to touch that, so right. I'll make the coffees for us in the morning. And then, yeah, it was usually shoot off for a bit of training for an hour or two and then come home and, um, yeah, just be dad. So take the kids out or do something with the kids. And, um, yeah, the summer months are really special when I have that time off just to be around a lot. Um, and then in season, it's probably the same morning as that, but then it's into the club for training from probably, you know, seven o'clock to four o'clock when we get out of there in pre-season. And then um, it's home to the kids and Alex and usually Jax wants to play basketball or footy or tennis or whatever. And Darcy's showing me some drawings she's done for the day and then she usually jumps in. So um, yeah, it's pretty hectic, pretty busy with kids and footy and Alex and life, but um, I wouldn't have it any other way. So the Pies play lots of night games. What do you do when you get home to unwind and settle down after playing a game of football? It's really hard, yeah. yeah like it you're is. probably getting to yeah. sleep in the early hours yeah. of the morning. We don't get traditionally don't get home to sort of one o'clock and obviously playing a lot of night games. I know you're that wired. I need to then sit down and relax for an hour. Um, but you're not supposed to watch the replay because all the emotions come back out. So yeah, I just I don't know, I'll just sit down and just try and take an hour to myself and, you know, read a book or I usually chuck the replay on, I can't help myself. And then you fall asleep at about 2.30, 3 a.m. and then um, 7 a.m. the kids come in and jump and they're excited to see you and your eyes are sort of still in the back of your head. But you get up and you get your day started. So yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a tough one because all day you're waiting for this game and then yeah, you play and then you get up. Obviously that's when your recovery becomes so important post game for that next 48 hours. So Scott, I know you've been a supporter of Archie's right from the beginning. How, how did you find each other? Yeah, so early days, I think it was my second year, I broke my left foot playing and then, um, yeah, a podiatrist at the time recommended Archie's and something that I wanted to give a go and she said, you know, they're sort of um, new on the market, really cool um, and I think as a 19 year old, you'd be happy to wear them, so I've tried them. And was they, that important, the look, yeah? Yeah, well, you're 19, you think yeah. you're pretty cool at that stage, so it's <laughs> got to look good and suit the clothes you're wearing, so. Yeah, I tried them on and I've literally been in them ever since. So if I don't have footy boots on or runners, I'll be in the thongs or the slides. Scott, it has been awesome to sit down and chat with you. It's going to be another big year for the Pies. You'll have your Archies on, you'll be doing all the right things and you'll clock up game number 400 and maybe get another premiership medal. Yeah, that would be nice. So yeah, thanks for your time today, Sarah. Big year ahead. Cheers.